Today, the negative equity hotspots. Hello again, it's Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. Welcome to our latest post covering property and finance news with a distinctively Australian flavour. And today I just want to go through some of the headline news relating to our most recent research on negative equity. So just to be clear, negative equity is the situation where the total value of a mortgage outstanding is greater than the current market value of a property. And of course, if people get into negative equity, it means that they have great difficulty in selling, reduces their mobility, and based on experience from overseas, once negative equity bites, it acts as another break on the property market and more broadly on the broader economy. And there are households in the UK and in Ireland 10 years after the GFC that are still sitting on an equity deficit. So what I've done is to take the data from my household surveys, the 52,000 households, and run some algorithms over the data that I've got to identify households who may have a property in negative equity. Now that property may be an unoccupied property, or it may be an investment property. And because many households have multiple properties, my algorithm says that if any one of those properties is in negative equity, then the household is flagged as in negative equity. And then what I did was to map the count of households registering in negative equity down to postcode level. And I've mapped those so that we can see where the main hotspots are across the country. And perhaps no surprise, given the population density in New South Wales and Victoria, a lot of negative equity is also lurking in those areas, of course exacerbated by the recent price falls. And it's worth saying, of course, that the average numbers that everybody quotes have very little relevance when it comes to individual households individual locations. Now before I get into the detail there are a couple of higher level observations. Firstly, the number of first-time buyers in negative equity is associated with those who've bought in the last two or three years, particularly in Sydney and Melbourne. And in many cases, whilst they still contributed a greater share of the purchase price by way of a bigger deposit, that deposit has been completely eroded now. Secondly, about half of the negative equity households are directly related to property investments. And a lot of those property investments are high-rise buildings, particularly quite new ones, where the values have plummeted, not least because of engineering problems or simply because of huge levels of increased supply in recent times. And thirdly, it's also worth saying that there are also pockets of negative equity over in Perth, where of course prices have dropped considerably over a number of years, and also up in Darwin. And we're seeing only the first signs in and around Brisbane, although there are some regional postcodes where negative equity is considerably higher. So here is the map for Sydney, and the postcodes that have high levels of negative equity based on the number of households in that situation start with 2570, the Camden area, 2567 around Mount Allen and Narrell, 2560 which includes the areas around Campbelltown, 2155 around Kellyville and Beaumont Hills and Roos Hill, 2148 around Blacktown, Arundel Park and Kings Park, 2768 around Glenwood, Park Lee and Stanhope Gardens. 2763 around Acacia Gardens and Quakers Hill. 2761 around Dee Park, Oakhurst and Plumpton. And 2036 around Chifley, Hillsdale, Matraville, Port Phillip Bay and Port Botany. And now down in Melbourne, we find high levels of mortgage stress in 3030, including Derrimut, Point Cook and Werribee. 3029 at Hopper's Crossing. 3037 
including Sydenham in Victoria and Hillside. 3805, including Fountain Gate, Narrow Warren and Narrow One South. 3021, including Kings Park and St Albans. 3064, including Craigieburn, Mickleham and Roxburgh Park. 3806, including Berwick and Harkaway. And 3023, including Burnside, Caroline Springs and Deer Park. Now, those of you who have been following my posts will recognise some of those postcodes because there is quite a strong correlation between mortgage stress and negative equity. And that's because a lot of these postcodes are areas of considerably recent high density build where people have bought in close to the top of the market with very large mortgages and in some cases well above average incomes. But of course, large mortgages and highly leveraged households are considerably more exposed both from a cash flow perspective and also from a home price fall perspective. And in some of these postcodes, we have got plenty of evidence now to show that home prices have fallen by more than 20% from peak. And of course, falls continue. So the negative equity story is a really big deal and I think it will get considerably worse as we go forward. So I'll update the modelling in future weeks and we'll continue to track the trends as home prices fall further. I'm Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. Thanks for watching. I'll talk to you again next time.